All right, well, welcome back. It's um, It's been a few weeks, actually, since I've done an update. Um, I've been doing some work on the car, so um, there's going to be a lot to talk about. And so here we are. I'm just going to kind of get to it. Um, first, I guess to start with closest, well, first off, I have to apologize. My garage is a mess. I had a whole Corvette in here. I took it apart, robbed a whole bunch of pieces off of it. Uh, I got the engine and transmission driveline is all ready to be sold um, to somebody. Anyways, this is uh, where we're at right now. So first thing I've got done here is a couple of uh, Honda Civic radiators and fans. One of those is going to be used for cooling uh, the battery system. The other is going to be used for cooling uh, the motor and inverter. So those are going to mount up front in kind of the V area of the front of the car. And they're out right now. Test fit them, made brackets, there they are. Um, over here, I've got the Tesla drive unit. It is disassembled. I'll be back to talk about that more because that's um, kind of a big deal. So I'm going to go in a little bit more detail there. All right, over here, I've got a couple of these panels. So these are the aluminum panels that used to look like this. Uh, they go all over the car, essentially. Uh, in this case, what I've done is I've coated them with a temperature and sound uh, dampening type material. It's got a uh, kind of a thick thickness to it. It takes some of the tinniness out of the out of the um, the metal itself, so it still makes some noise when you tap on it, but it's not uh, not quite as high pitched, not as bad as it was before. Um, puzzle looks kind of nice. These have been coated in that stuff and then also uh, clear coated over them to make it waterproof. So using a just a 2K spray uh, clear coat with a matte finish um, for that. Um, let's see here, down here we've got one of the batteries. This is the one that kind of gets mounted uh, in the center up high. I've got some hoses laid out. Uh, so these are three quarter inch internal diameter um, hoses. These guys go, so one pair of hoses is two and two and from for the batteries. The other is two and from for the motor and inverter, which is obviously part of the motor. Uh, so there's three hoses there right now. Uh, the fourth one, I didn't have, ran out the first uh, amount I had, so I had to order more. I've got it, I just haven't ran it yet. Um, down here on the floor, I've been messing with suspension stuff, so we've got a front and a rear shock on the floor, which means the other front and rear shock are on the car. So I'm going to turn on this light here to probably help a little bit. So this is kind of mocked up. Um, some of the stuff's bolted down, some of it's just kind of hanging there. It is going to come back apart. Uh, so we've basically got the Factory 5 uh, Coney shock with the 450 pound spring in the front. Uh, the rest is Corvette suspension and uh, went with a Willwood six piston caliper setup. You can kind of see inside there, so kind of staggered sizes. Um, 14 inch rotors off of like a C6 Z06 uh, goes on the front here. Uh, this is one of the very first panels that's actually mounted to the car or the chassis. Whole bunch of rivets everywhere and this has been coated in the same stuff we just talked about. Um, I'm using some blue uh, tamper seal just as like a marker, hey this bolt is tight kind of thing. So that bolt's tight. Some of these down here are tight, uh, but not everything. So it'll be a marker for me. Here is the V area. So that's where those radiators are going to mount. Um, you know, I've got uh, again some custom brackets that I made for it. Uh, I'll show you more once they're actually installed and in the car. We make our way over here. See, we've got some uh, Corvette parts down on the floor here. So the column, going to use everything except for the steering wheel itself um, out of the column. Got a fuse box that'll go with the motor swap that I'm selling. The uh, what's it called? Transmission for the and, uh, motor for the uh, wipers. So I'll be using that for the swap or for the kit car rather. Uh, make our way back here. We've got the rear suspension. So same deal. We've got a Kony shock with a 750 pound spring. It's what came with the factory 5 kit. 
that's mounted to a custom bracket that bracket that black bracket there um, so that's not the way it comes from the factory from the Corvette um, so I did install that came with the kit obviously and Willwood four piston calipers back here with a 12 inch rotor um, went with the smaller one on the back weight distribution and also to um, plan on fitting a smaller wheel in the back if I need to get traction, that sort of thing. So see so you got some the hoses are kind of run up through the chassis along with the power cables for the batteries and the motor. Um, this stuff is not permanently mounted, just kind of laying there for sizing. I've got some T's ordered that'll have to go to each motor, so I'm waiting on that stuff to show up. I uh, still have to get the Tesla drive unit back here and uh, test fit for its mounting, its like final mounting position. Um, but I needed to have the suspension, which I finally do, in place so that I know where the axle is going to have to go, uh, which is going to be in this area and through here, obviously. The uh, factory Corvette radiator I'm not going to be using because I've got the custom Civic ones. Got the uh, Corvette LS1 out of the um, the the one Corvette that I bought. Uh, so that's for sale, selling it a whole thing. Got the, in case you've never seen it, the drive line out of the Corvette. Uh, so this is the rear differential. That's the T56 transmission, so it mounts directly to the differential. And that's a torque tube, which basically has a drive shaft in it um, for fitment, um, for getting the power to the back. So the clutch is in the front of these, transmission, differential in the back. Kind of weird setup, um, but it w works out well for weight distribution in the Corvette at least. So if you didn't know that, um, now you know. I've had a lot of people message me asking for the T56, um, but they're asking for cars that there's no way a rear-mounted transmission would ever work in. So I've had to educate a couple people over that. Uh, walking around the car, so kind of the same setup. Over here, so this is an interesting part that we've been working on. Got the... Uh, it's kind of dark in here, uh, kind of see maybe better from right here. So down inside here, this is a vintage air evapor um, evaporator kit. So this has a blower motor, it has an AC evaporator core, and then it also has some fittings on the side. That's for the heater core. Um, on top is a small little control box right there. Um, this is in a custom spot because of where the batteries and stuff are located in the car. So I've got um, some custom brackets going on on top here. And I'm going to have to modify the footwell on the passenger side for that to work. Get in here where it's dark and kind of see it. So it has uh, vents for the you know lower vents, upper vents, defrost, and yeah. Uh, anyways, so been working on fitting that. That's why there is no uh, panel or suspension on this side because accessing it. I've got a, a high voltage AC compressor on order for this thing. It's probably going to go on the right here on this like a little X brace on the frame right beside it. And of course, the condenser is going to go up here where the radiators are. Uh, kind of a straightforward setup, but it is. Uh, a little confusing because uh, they don't not good documentation, but um, working it out, we'll figure it out, and make it make it work. Of course, like everything else in this car. Um, so yeah, there's that's it. That's updates on on the actual car itself. Um, again, not a whole lot has been done. Uh, have been busy with a whole bunch of things, but um, some of the stuff's been more some of the more difficult items to work on in terms of uh, not. I mean, the batteries are hard because like making them fit, but they're pretty short sure troubleshooting um, to make it fit and work uh, with custom bracketry and whatnot. Over here, you can see the rest of the suspension for the car, uh, front and rear for the passenger side, obviously. And then we're going to head back over here to the Tesla drive unit. So this is what everybody's uh, always curious to see. stuff by the way I wasn't really planning on making this video right now but I didn't decide I need to get it done so this is the Tesla drive unit crack this thing in half 
It has some high voltage power bus bars back there that connect the two sides. Those have to be disconnected before it, the whole thing is disconnected. Um, so in here, we've got the inverter is on this side. The motor itself is on this side. And you can see the gear coming out of it. It's hard to see, but it's back there. Um, which turns this bigger gear and then so this is the main drive gear turns this this is of course affixed to this guy that meshes with the big ring gear on the differential itself now you can see the differential here so we have these spider gears is what they're called this is anytime you see this specifically that's an open differential which means that if one tire starts to spin real fast, uh, chances are the other one's not going to be spinning with it. Um, basically, there is no like torque vectoring with this type of differential. And if you're on a, like a perfectly flat, uh, even surface with equal traction be between both tires, chances are you'll get both tires to spin equally. Uh, but if you're uh, loose pavement conditions or one tire gets more grip than the other, uh, you'll end up with the infamous uh, one wheel peel. So anyways, this is going away. I have ordered a limited slip differential for this. Quaif makes one. They're the only ones I know of to make one that replace the center. So it'll reuse the ring gear and uh, the bolts probably is about it. The center will be replaced with the mechanical limited slip diff. Um, figured the best stuff to do it now while this is all apart. Then. The reason why this is all apart is because of plumbing. So this drive unit is meant to sit a certain way. So it's meant to sit the way it currently is. Um, so this is the bottom and then this is the top. But to fit it in the GTM, it has to be flipped over so that this is the bottom and this is the top. Well, I was hoping it wasn't gonna be a big deal and I'll be honest, I'm not completely sure how big of a deal it really is but there is an oil pump in the system and that oil pump feeds oil to the gears and the bearings and I want to make sure that uh, this stuff doesn't get oil starved. So this is a little bit of a uh, confusing thing to discuss if you're not familiar how this stuff works. Um, so we basically got, this is the strainer, so the oil pickup normally is mounted there underneath the, the ring gear, so this piece the ring gear actually sits in that and spins around. There is a plastic gear, this guy, normally sits about right here, that meshes with the big ring gear, so that spins. And then this is a fluid pump. So this fluid pump, oil pump, uh, is driven by that little gear off the ring gear. And that here, spins and sprays fluid. So it does three things. This is the nozzle. So you can see it has basically an inlet. It has a nozzle here, a nozzle here, and then an outlet here. So this outlet actually goes into, see down there, into the casing. And that, to the best we can tell, lubricates the backside of this ring gear and the bearing on the front of the drive unit or the actual motor itself. The other two, so as it's sitting down here, are just sprayers. They spray oil on this gear on the actual teeth and then this side sprays it on this bearing here off to the side. So, because the pickup is down here, uh, down here normally, um, it'll be not you know, not, it'll be just sucking air basically. We turn this thing upside down and don't change anything. We tried putting a length of hose on this, spinning this with a drill to see if it would self prime uh, and it doesn't. So it needs to be primed prior to it actually drawing fluid. So I couldn't just move the pickup up here. So because of that, basically what's gonna happen is I've, I've purchased an external fluid pump. So I've got this guy uh, from Tilton and so kind of what's going to happen is this is normally a breather. I'm going to have a fitting here that's going to feed the fluid pump. Fluid pump is going to come up to a reservoir. The reservoir is going to have like an overflow so it can flow back into the case. 
Um, and then it's also going to have a gravity feed. The gravity feed is going to go through the case, basically into this hose, into the fluid pump, and then that'll supply fluid for her lubrication for the whole unit, essentially, at that point. So kind of <laughs> messing around with the, the way uh, Tesla did it just a little bit, um, kind of using some of their stuff designed in, just kind of uh, resupplying or re-oiling in a different way or getting oil to the pump a different way rather. Uh, so yeah, so the drive unit, the um, limited slip should hopefully be here soon. Once it is, I'm gonna drill some holes in the case. I just got the pump this weekend. Um, I'm gonna have to start thinking about some fittings to go in these things and drilling through the side of the case. Not a fan of it, but um, about the only way I can think of to do uh, what I want to do. I think there's some people out there that use these things upside down um, without any special lubrication. And I imagine it'll probably work for a period of time. This is pretty thin fluid, um, so it, and it, it gets sprayed around in here quite a bit. So I feel like most everything stays pretty well lubricated even without, because um, it's what's called splash lubricated. But at the same time, um, these motors can be kind of pricey and I don't want to be tearing this up. Plus, um, kind of want to do the little bit of experiment so that anybody else that's attempting this swap and runs into this issue um, can learn from it. And that's, um, that's what I've got. So I know I said it was going to be uh, a lot of information. I did kind of rush through it because I was just trying to get it done. Uh, get this video out so you guys can take a look and see, see what the progress is. Uh, chances are I'll have some more detailed stuff coming up here in the next week or so uh, once I get just a little bit more done and have a little better idea of how the, some of this stuff's going to work. Uh, in the meantime, oh, one, one last thing. Stay tuned. Uh, my, my buddy Stan, he was helping me work on this stuff. He was um, test fitting one of these panels. And they're aluminum. And he... As you can see right here and right here, put that up against uh, this battery, but on that side. So that battery over there, that panel goes along that side rail. He was moving it around and uh, shorted out the battery terminals. So it's a 45 volt battery, uh, hundreds of amps. I've got a video from my security cam footage. I will tag that. It'll be. Actually, I'm just going to probably uh, tag it right along the end of this video. So stay tuned um, for Stan almost killing himself with a high voltage electric car battery. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I won't comment after that, but uh, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, share, um, and any questions uh, in the comments below, please.